Good day, everyone. This is Alan Schimmel, MediaOps, DevOps.com. Thanks for joining us on another DevOps.com webinar event. Today's event is a special edition roundtable. It's brought to us, it's part of the DevOps Unbound video series, you know, which is a DevOps Unbound, for those of you who may not know, is a bi-weekly video series where uh, my host Mitchell or my co-host Mitchell Ashley and I uh, speak to some of the leaders in the DevOps space on various topics around DevOps. It is available on TechStrong TV, TechStrong.tv, every other week when we play it, as well as all issues, our, all episodes are available on our Digital Anarchist video platform. And you can just get a, a complete directory of DevOps Unbound at DevOpsUnbound.com, where we also have uh, audio versions of the shows as podcasts. Uh, written articles with transcripts, etc. Once a month, however, though, for DevOps Unbound, we do do these live roundtables, which are open to the public to come in and ask questions of our esteemed guest on our roundtable. And we do have a, a great roundtable this month uh, to, to answer your questions and, and discuss the topic. Before we begin, though, and I introduce our roundtable, let me just take a quick moment. We do use the GoToWebinar system for these roundtables. And for most of you, that means you have a GoToWebinar control panel in your upper right-hand corner. There's two sections of that control panel that I want to bring to your attention. One is the, question, the section marked questions. Um, this is where we use GoToWebinar to allow you to ask questions to our Panel. We don't have the ability to turn on your video and audio and ask questions that way yet, though maybe next year. Um, but you can type your questions in in real time there. They're queued. We're not setting aside questions at the end. We're going to try to work questions in as we go. So type your questions in and I'll try to work them right into the into the discussion today. Um, if we if there are so many questions that we can't get to them, we we will we have a record of them and we'll try to get answers there for you. So please use the questions section for questions of our panel. There's another section marked chat. If you can hit the little down arrow, make the arrow facing down or carrot facing downward there. We use chat for technical support. If you can't hear a guest, the video is not working, whatever is wrong, but you can still get to that chat section. We do have folks standing by who will try to help you. And, and you know, get as most enjoyment out of this as you can. This roundtable is being recorded. It will be available probably within a few hours of today's broadcast on an on-demand basis. Of course, our guests won't be live for you to ask questions of, but you'll be able to watch the roundtable in its entirety in a few hours. So one other quick comment. We are going to be doing just one or two poll questions today. And um, I, they're only as good as your participation. These are two yes or no questions that I made up. They're really simple, but I'm gonna ask each and every one of you to add, answer the question so that we have a better idea of where the audience is, what's your understanding of the topic, and, and it'll help our, our panel kind of raise the conversation or frame the conversation. Um, okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into our topic. Let's jump into our panel. Uh, it is DevOps Unbound Roundtable, uh, and Tricentis is our sponsor for all of DevOps Unbound, so many thanks to Tricentis. And today's topic is Day 2 DevOps. Let me introduce you to what I think is a great panel. First of all, I have my friend, John Willis. John, John needs no introduction to DevOps audiences around the world. Um, John, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yep. Um, John, just in case maybe someone doesn't know a little John Willis background, you want, you want to give him just a, a flavor? Yeah, no, no worries. Um, yeah, I currently work at Red Hat on a team called the Global Transformation Office with uh, Kevin Baer, uh, for those you know, the Phoenix Project, co-author of the Phoenix Project, Andrew Clay Schaefer, uh, everybody in DevOps should know Andrew, little idea, and Jay Bloom, who uh, 
who rounds off our team with a PhD in design transition from Carnegie Mellon. So uh, we started about a year ago. Um, one of the things that we, we talked about, which was we were, all four of us were pretty deeply involved in the first 10 years of this DevOps thing. And uh, Jim Whitehurst pretty much invited us to see if we could help with Red Hat to find the next 10 years. So it's been pretty exciting. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited about what we're doing and what we can do in this next decade. Fantastic. Um, next up, I want to introduce you to Kurt Chase. Kurt uh, barely has got his feet on the ground there at Tricentis, but has a, a distinguished career doing a lot of stuff around release engineering and software. Kurt, introduce yourself, please. Hi, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, as you said, I just recently joined Tricentis as head of global release management. Prior to that, I spent uh, time at Splunk, and prior to that, at Autodesk. Um, at Autodesk, I worked on, oh, man. 10 to 15 AutoCAD releases back in the day, as I mentioned to the panel when we connected earlier this week, I think I was doing DevOps before pagers were around, if people remember pagers. Um, and then I joined Splunk, uh, running release engineering and engineering services, just really focused on what we can do to develop our software faster with higher quality and at much larger scale. So glad to be here today. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Kurt. Next up, we have Mr. Alex Hidalgo from Noble9. Hey, Alex, welcome. Give a little background, please. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, uh, my name is Alex Hidalgo. Uh, I'm currently the Principal Site Reliability Engineer at Noble9. Uh, before that, I spent time at Squarespace, and before that, at Google, where I cut my teeth uh, doing site reliability engineering. Uh, before that, I spent about a decade in the service industry, working retail and restaurants and things like that. And uh, I was bringing that up because I think actually some of the skills I learned there are some of the most important skills I've learned in my entire career. Um, I absolutely love everything about kind of sustainable operations and how we can how we can communicate with each other better. And uh, at the end of the day, it's always all about the people. Absolutely. Alex, thank you for joining us. Last, but oh, well, not last, but next is my partner at the DevOps Institute, Jane Grohl. Jane, welcome. If you want to give a little background. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, speaking of people, Alex, uh, I am Jane Grohl, CEO of the DevOps Institute, and our mission is to advance the human elements of, of DevOps. So I absolutely agree with you. The people are the most important element when we look at transformation. Uh, for me personally, I've been in IT for a pretty long time, uh, mostly in IT ops, uh, with Alan and others, founded DevOps Institute uh, several years ago. Uh, we are a member organization, professional member organization. Today, membership is free. So I would invite anyone listening to become a member. Okay. Uh, then last but not least is my co-host on DevOps Unbound, uh, Mitchell Ashley. Mitchell, introduce yourself. Oh, I'm always happy to uh, finish, finish up the group. We've got a great panel here today, great group. Uh, my name is Mitch Ashley. I'm CEO of Accelerated Strategies Group. It's an analyst firm in the IT industry that focuses on DevOps, cloud native, cybersecurity, uh, digital transformation. So right in the space that we're talking about today, and I'm both a an IT person as well as a product person and business as well. So I've kind of worked on both sides of, of the aisle, if you will, and, and also in business and technical roles. So, and also a practitioner of DevOps. So still do that today. Very cool. And then I, I want to mention that unfortunately, the last member of our panel, my friend Raven Manuel, unable to log in today, and we're all the loser because of it. Raven is an amazing person with an amazing life story of how she wound up being the DevOps person at the Smithsonian Institute Museum of African Culture. Uh, Raven, if you ever you do get a chance to see her speak, I, I don't miss it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry she can't be here today. We're kind of bummed. We're still trying to rectify that. If she does log on, I'll introduce her. But I, I have to apologize and seriously bummed out that she wasn't not here to join with us. Anyway, um, so today's today's topic is day two DevOps. And I'm going to ask our panel to kind of give us their definition of day two, each of our panel members, to give us or comment each 
on, on what their definition of day two DevOps is. But before we do, I wanted to ask our audience um, a little bit of what kind of your feelings or thoughts are on day two DevOps. So I wanted to quickly ask you all here, are you all familiar with the term day two DevOps? And again, these polls are only as good as your participation. So please answer them. Um, and it's really yes, no, or you're not sure. Uh, it's a pretty sim simple thing. And, you know, if what I suspect is what I suspect, we've got some explaining to do about just kind of foundationally, what do we mean by day two DevOps? So please answer. I'm going to shut things. We only got about half of you vote. Come on, give us some other people out there. Let's let's vote a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's good practice to vote anyway, get in the practice of voting. Um, we're going to shut it off here in five, four, three, two. Come on, let's get a few more votes here, get over two thirds. Okay, we are going to close the poll and share the results. Wow, panel, I don't know if you expected this, but 71, almost three quarters of our audience are just not familiar with the term day two DevOps. I'm glad you showed up and maybe we have something that we have at the very least something to teach you um but i'm 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 a little taken back by that uh, so why don't we start right there then and let's lay out what do we mean by day two devops uh alex would you like to lead things off and then i'm going to ask the panel to join in don't don't wait for me to to ask you alex go ahead Sure. I mean, I think there are a lot of potential kind of, you know, like definitions here, but the way I like to think about it is it's your first concrete and almost kind of defined time period to take a look back to say, what have we accomplished so far? Uh, what, uh, uh, how are the people involved feeling about the progress we've made? Um, what do we need to do next? It's, it's kind of an, it's kind of a demarcation point uh, more than anything else to kind of say how, have things been? Take a look back, analyze, measure. Uh, maybe you have some actual uh, you know, metrics. Uh, maybe you just need to go talk to people and kind of figure out how do we feel about this process so far and where should we go next? Hey, hey Alan, I'm going to jump in and be a party pooper. I, I don't really like the day two DevOps. I mean, it's borrowed from day enough. It's borrowed from day two operations and operations really implies a very sort of technical thing. And, and I think when you, we talk about day two DevOps, we sort of go back to maybe being sort of overloaded on the technical, you know, we wanted to get this platform in, we wanted to get this in, and, and, and from a day two operations perspective, I think that's sort of reasonable. But in, when you talk about sort of all the ingredients of DevOps, culture, you know, behavior patterns and all that, I mean, that, that notion of a stopping point that's a retrospective, right? That's that's a continuum of what you do. So I, I again, I, I just I, I get you know what we do in this industry is, and and I'm as guilty as anybody else is we take sort of nice marketing words and campaigns and use them really to help people learn, right? We use these words. Most of the people on this panel don't use these words for any trickery or marketing. We just figure if we can put if we can codify a phrase or something like that it'll enable us to be better at helping other people learn. Um, so again, in that regard, I don't think it's a sort of terrible word, but I do think um, there's a difference between day two operations and what, what we would notionally call day two operations or day two DevOps. I think if you don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of a different spin. I think day two DevOps is, you know, John, you said 10 years, right? And I think I met you eight years ago when there was still debate about whether DevOps would be adopted by the enterprise or not, right? Whether it was relevant to the enterprise. I think day two DevOps is we've spent day one trying to figure out what DevOps is or isn't. Is it philosophy? Is it movement? Is it automation? Is it whatever? And, and I think day two is we're moving into how do we do this? And so, I, I, you know, those of us in this space may assume that, that organizations are more mature in their journey than they, they may be. There are many that are, you know, starting out of the gate. And I think for them... Isn't it sorry? different? Because I, I think, and again, I'll, I'll shut up here in a second, but I mean, if we're talking about day two operations being about the movement, 
then I'm all in. But I don't think, I think when people, obviously the the, the 13% maybe that answered, um, I think they see it more of this sort of, what do you do after you get, in fact, if you look at sort of anything about anything day two terminology, it's always like get things in and then sort of desk check where you are. So it's very sort of specific to an implementation of DevOps, I think. But if that's the meaning, then yeah, I agree with you 100%. That's my meaning. I mean, truthfully, John, that's my meaning, that I think that when we look at day two DevOps from a community perspective, that you know, this year in particular, I think really demonstrated that digital transformation is just no longer optional. And mm -hmm. so organizations are now going, okay, mm -hmm. I need to stop thinking about what it is and I need to start thinking about how we do it. And maybe some step down the, the path Maybe some are more mature down the path, and maybe some are just, you know, putting their foot over the over the starting line. And so, we, you know, when we look at day two, particularly those of us that have maybe seen the space grow, um, let's stop thinking about what it is. Let's start thinking about more about how do we do different aspects of it, right? And, yeah. and so that's just my interpretation. Yeah, I was going to I was going to chime in. I like everything all of you said. I agree with John. I agree with Alex. To me, you know, the last big DevOps transformation that I led, we made a CI/CD maturity model, if you will. We used the book from Jez and we went through all the different categories. And I think there are elements within, whether it's the process or the people, where you do hit a day two, where you've come to a point of completion and you have a chance to reflect back and say, is this working? What can we do to make it more efficient? So I think there's elements in all of it. That's what day two is to me. I've never made that separation. It becomes a continuum, as John said, you know, and I, I've instructed many of my teams that unfortunately we're never done. You know, as soon as we think we're done, there's new technology, uh, new processes, new ways to do things. And we want to take advantage of those. And so, yeah, that's I, I, I've never really made a separation. It's all a continuum in my mind, you know, and it's just there. But there are discrete points in time where you can take measurements and take stock to Alex's point. I definitely agree with that um, and make changes at that point in time. I think that's a, a really good point around the, the measurement, Kurt. Are we are we done? And like yeah. a lot of terms, the panel represents this, you know, terms get used in a lot of different ways. And, and sometimes the meaning, meaning is even local to an organization. But that idea, idea of continuous improvement and how you scale up what you're doing so that that is part of the overall process, whether mm -hmm. it's in your local team, small team, or you're trying to do this on a larger enterprise level. And that also is something that I've heard as a reference to day two is we're here, we've got a few teams that have you know, implemented DevOps mm -hmm. and maybe done it well, and we want to scale it to the rest of the organization. I'm not sure if that's that's the most popular definition of it, but I've heard it that way yeah. too. Of yeah. on our journey, option, how do we get the whole organization there? Also, it's the same yeah, thing. I mean, one of my favorite authors is the Heath brothers. They have uh, the Switch framework, and they talk about bright spots. And I think that's something I definitely look for. You know, who's doing what we want? You know, and or elements of it, and what can we leverage? When we're talking about anything in this space, right? Like DevOps is not something you can check off a list, right? It's it's a philosophy, it's yep. an approach. Uh, same with site reliability engineering or agile or right any of these things. They're they're different ways of thinking, and therefore, of course, yeah, like they never end. You can't do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can only kind of refine over time, and uh, you know, hopefully, use these approaches to better reflect on how things have gone and help them better set your direction moving into the future, but totally agree. Like, like this isn't something you can just do. It's a forever process. Yeah, yeah and I guess that's the only reason I, I, I hesitate on day two because it, yeah. it I, I look for words that I think people can interpret in the wrong way, right? And, and so day two sort of seems to me like a finality or like I got to this stage. And, and I'd rather much people think about we're on a continuum we're going to have re retrospectives. We're going to have postmortems. We're going to just constantly iterate on a continuum. So, because I think again, I, I think I over said stated this, but day two operations I think works because that's like I got a plan. I got to put in some technology. I have to like once the technology in, I got to come up with sort of plans to sort of scale the technology. And I think if we use that for DevOps, maybe there's might not major harm, but minor harm. But yeah, I think we're all in agreement on. Stop. The thing that's important, I know uh, Jane mentioned it earlier, is never forgetting about the people. We do want to have points in time where you can celebrate. 
you know, terrific accomplishments, you know, whether it's, you know, developing a new system or adding a new capability to the CI pipeline, you definitely want to take time to celebrate that because it goes by too quickly. You blink and you're on to something else and you, you forget about what the team accomplished just two hours ago. You know, so I think that's, to me, that's part of day two where you got to stop and say, hey, great job. Now, what's next? So great. I, you know, I, I would just also mention that in my, you know, mind view of what I mean when I talk about day two DevOps, there's also the recognition that over the last, whatever it's been, eight or 10 years, organizations have undertaken you know, DevOps journeys as part of their digital transformation. And, you know, it's part of the IT industry problem in that we think we have these silver bullets that are just going to make everything better and perfect. And DevOps is great, but it, it's not the panacea. It's not the answer to every question. It, it's not the the solution to every problem. And I think a lot of organizations kind of went through their little DevOps journey or the beginning of their DevOps journey. And, and quite frankly, maybe were disappointed that it wasn't all unicorns and, and rainbows, <laughs> right? That that it's it's hard, it's hard to do this right. It's hard, but it's worthwhile. Yeah, so I mean like- me, that's what, you know, it's, it's about finding what's worthwhile and what we do here. I'm sorry, Alex, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to inject, uh, I thought you were finished. Uh, yeah, I mean, as people here may or may not know, my whole thing is service level objectives, right? Like that's what I've been working on for half a decade. That's what I've been helping people implement. And I see so many companies, they're like, oh, this shiny new term, uh, this new marketing term, let's jump on this. And then people try to implement it and then they fail miserably because uh, as I was just saying, they think of it as a thing you can like check off of the list. And they don't understand it's a different approach, right? Just like how DevOps is a different approach. And when you're dealing with approaches, it can sometimes take years for you to actually see the benefit. Um, you know, you got to make sure that you're realizing that, you know, like DevOps originally was just, you know, and it's kind of grown and matured and changed, right? But I think uh, in the, the original talk John Alspa gave in like 2009, it was literally just like, make sure people are talking to each other, right? <laughs> like that was, you know, like the yeah. original intention of DevOps, which is like, make sure everyone's communicating, make sure people are in meetings together, make sure, you know, and, you know, that, that, that is why it kind of bugs me that, that, phrases like this, DevOps and SRE and things like that, they become marketing terms to the point that like now people have titles, like I am a DevOps, what is, that doesn't actually mean anything. I like how Mitch put it earlier, that he's a practitioner of DevOps. That's mm -hmm. the right way to think about it. Right? You're someone who uses this philosophy, not, you know, like the fact that Microsoft Azure has a product named Azure DevOps, what does that even mean? Right? Well, yeah, there's a couple of points. So what would you, I'm gonna sort of, Start with Azure DevOps. I mean, if you looked at Azure DevOps, it's pretty freaking awesome. It's no, actually it's an awesome it, product. It, I just it, don't like the name. And, and, and it's a mindset. But the other thing too, would you say that are you okay with SRE as a title, but not okay with DevOps as a title? I think so because it's uh, maybe this is just from like a grammar standpoint, right? But DevOps was originally phrased as a philosophy. Site reliability engineering was originally a title. Um, Okay, but that's not the way it's being sold right. in enterprise now, right? I mean, I see, yeah. I see incident managers renaming their title, just like people th three years ago were renaming DevOps, but they renaming operations to DevOps. I find almost every enterprise I go, there's uh, an ITIL or incident management team that is basically fell swoop, renamed themselves to SRE, and they yeah. haven't changed anything about their operational behaviors, um, and and they're using that on their resume as titles and. So I, I I I see a false equivalent there of comparing DevOps and SRE. Yeah, but but take it even further than that. And I think, you know, just going back to day two DevOps, I think Alex, John, you bring up good points. We have a long history in IT of of what I'll call framework wars, right? Where you know, there's a there's almost like a religious aspect to whichever framework you you know bind yourself to, whether it's ITIL or Agile or DevOps or SRE, and we run into the risk that 
you know, these loyalist armies. I mean, I come from the ITIL space, and let me tell you, that loyalist army is pretty powerful, right? And pretty determined when at the end of the day, if we really look at DevOps as a recipe, right? That's the way I like to think of DevOps, as a recipe that has all these different ingredients, you know, whether it's CICD, automation, people, process, ITIL, agile, you know, I don't know, pick all the other frameworks. Um, you know, then we start to look at it as the proportion of the ingredients that you would use in your recipe. You would look at the quality of the ingredients that you use in your recipe. And then that starts to make sense. But if we start to, and, and you do run the risk. IT, we love our frameworks. I mean, I, you know, Alan knows this. I'm married to a CPA. They have one, right? Generally accepted accounting <laughs> principles. They figured it out. It's been time and eternity, right? We don't have generally accepted yeah. IT principles. Um, and so we fall into these marketing. It isn't even marketing. It's it's almost like instant gratification terms. Like if I read, you know, and I, I sorry, I'm gonna be a little snarky. Like I used to say in the ITIL books, if you know, first you have to sing a hymn before you open the books, and then you go to a chapter and verse. And so that's what ends up happening. And we don't want that to happen on day two DevOps, right? We don't want this to become so overused or so misinterpreted that that the spirit you know, going back to John Osborne, the spirit is lost, right? The spirit of, of what DevOps should be and why it came to be in the first place is lost. And so there's a real risk there as we move forward that it becomes the, you know, CIO saying, hey, I want DevOps by Thursday. And the ITIL people say no, and the Agile people say no. And, you know, and again, now you've got these like loyalists. I, I compare it to Game of Thrones. I think of it almost like, you know, we use the term software engineering, and that encapsulates a ton of different roles underneath it. And to me, that's what I kind of view DevOps. I think DevOps is becoming a term like that, where I think you're all right. I think it makes sense in someone's title. It makes sense as a culture and a philosophy. To me, it's like software engineering. You know, you have your back-end engineers, your front-end engineers, things like that. And that's where DevOps kind of sits in my mind that if I had a C-level exec come to me and say, hey, I want DevOps, it'd be like, all right, well, what part do you want? There's so many different pillars here. Do you need the reporting? Do you need, you know, which which aspect of it? Um, that's where I, I see it. So yeah, it, it when it first came on the scene, DevOps, it was, I think, more of a culture, a way to do things, a strategy. But I think as it's evolved, it's become valid titles. I mean, I think a DevOps architect is a valid title. You know, someone that's familiar with all the pieces that make up the DevOps that are specific to your operations, you know, what you may be running. So that's where it kind of falls in my mind, or it's growing, if you will. You know, I don't know if it's going to wind up there. So but. I'm not pro title or, or nay, nay title, right? Like it, what I don't like is sort of the misuse of the term. So yeah. like there's this binary thinking that if somebody calls themselves a DevOps technician DevOps special that's the most horrible thing in the world without ever peeling the onion to find out exactly how they're doing right. I love what you said Kurt right it, it like the title can be fine if it is sort of the right things a DevOps mm -hmm. title as a silo of another group that you know, other groups have to throw the war over the wall is completely contrary to sort of right. John Ospar's original presentation, which I was actually at that presentation, and another presentation a lot of people didn't see because it wasn't recorded, was Andrew Clay Schaefer, where he really sort of defined the wall of confusion. Um, it was at the same conference. So the same thing with SRE. I love SRE. I, I think yeah. it's an incredible way to build an abstraction, particularly around platforms. But um, but but a misuse of an SRE title e is equal of a misuse of a, a DevOps title when when a team just sort of decides they're tired of getting told they have to do DevOps. Yeah, sure, I'll do it next month. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And then they read um, that Dev Dev uh, SRE implements DevOps and they, the team comes back, hey, you're doing DevOps now. And they're like, yeah, we are. Well, wait a minute, <laughs> last week you weren't. Uh, no, no, we're SRE now. So yeah. We're doing DevOps. Yeah, okay. and I think like, I think what everyone said actually explained what I was trying to say better, right? I'm not uh, uh, opposed to someone necessarily having the title. It's the dilution, right, that I'm worried about. It's exactly what John was just saying and what Jane touched upon. It's do people still remember what this means? And when you something that was 
originally meant to be a philosophy is now a title that doesn't help yeah. right so i'm not yeah. i'm not against people having the title right i just mean it's those kind of things it's the marketing it's the exact like the wholesale renaming of organizations just because that's what the cto now thinks they need right we take all of our sysadmins and now they're all devops that that doesn't help us you know like in the end so yeah like i apologize if i'm too strongly worded i'm not actually necessarily against people using it at, you know as a title it's just an example of how this can be diluted yeah, yeah i think yeah, what we're talking right. about is the overuse or let's make whatever we're doing sound popular by just using the term right i'll add this to my right. resume whether it's sre or devops or whatever and you, and you peel back the onion to, to, to john's term you're like well that's that's not devops you all aren't implementing devops and yeah. that's when it really is credibility because then people are saying well what are you you, you clearly don't know what it means if that's if that's what's happening so maybe there's a little bit of self-policing in it but the thing that i really like you know to credit of you know the thought leaders you know panelists here and, and others around devops is there's there's it's not a prescription cookbook that says this is how you do it it's i don't want to overstate it it's kind of like our constitution they don't tell us exactly how to do everything we have to figure out how to adopt it and learn what it means to do things a certain way you know what does it mean to do continuous integration how in your organization you may never do 10 deploys a minute or 10 deploys an hour or 10 deploys a week mm -hmm. that may sure. be too much but it's adapted to what the velocity that you need and also the organization can consume you know that's just speaking one tiny tiny bit about how we create software i always describe devops is devops is the how we create software and there's some things that help us because we can use tools and services and cloud and lots of things that we didn't have available to us you know 20 years ago that are readily available now but part of that practitioner part to me is just learning it's a continuous learning mm -hmm. I think sre is a great example Guys, I, I, I'm jump in here because this is around oh sorry john i'm sorry but we've got a bunch of questions from the audience okay. and they're, and they're, you know what i mean that's why we're doing this i gotta I got to bring this in. So, uh, Pinar from the audience wants to know, you know, we measure everything in tech. For this, you know, whatever you want to, however you want to define day to day to day to DevOps, what are kind of key measurement points? What are the metrics? How do you recognize it? Right? You know, it, it, if I'm going to put my finger on something, right? How do I? What are well, the for, what are the key metrics? For me to jump in here, I. Got I can go back to Splunk. I was lucky when I joined Splunk in release engineering because I had Splunk. And so one of the first things that we did as part of the release engineering work and, and the DevOps work was we Splunked everything. Jenkins, the source code management, sent all the data to Splunk. So then we could start to get the insights that we had. So that would be my recommendation right there is to really look at the tools and services you're running and get all that data into some type of analytics, whether it's Splunk or uh, some other Elasticsearch type, and then just start following some of the data. I think there's hard data you can start tracking and that was very successful for us. It allowed us to see problems with our infrastructure and other things before they would happen. But again, I had the luxury of having such a wonderful tool like Splunk. You know, and uh, I can't speak enough to how much that helped us, you know, and it was it was hard to go back and get the data from some of the tools that had become ingrained in the tool chain. Some of that was very challenging. But as we move forward, when you start out with thinking, how am I going to capture the data from this tool or process? That's a huge win when you get to the end and you have all that data at your fingertips. Man, the insights it gives you is incredible. Um, so for me, it was actually the rubber hit the road right there at Splunk with gathering the data. We we measured everything in the chain, even the pull request speed we got into with the the engineering velocity to understand that a little bit better. Why some teams seem to get their pull requests done quicker than others, and what why is that? Is there a reason here that we could, you know, leverage? If I was going to concede that there is a day zero, day one, day two, I would say day zero is about planning the outcomes that you want. Day one is making sure that you have some amount of implementation structure to evidence those outcomes. And then day two would be um, sort of observation of a continuous model of those outcomes. So it's not really about sort of not, no disrespect to, I mean, Splunk's a great tool and Elasticsearch and all those things, but it's about defining the type of outcomes that have to be sort of mandatory. 
Mm -hmm. I think we learned enough about the Dora that probably every pipeline should have the four, Dora four. I'm a big, big fan of flow metrics. So those are things, you right. know, I think flow metrics are, um, you know, no disrespect to the Dora metrics, but I mean, those are latent in design, right? Mm -hmm. The flow metrics are, are where they capture wait time, tack time, um, are, are um, leading indicators. But the point being that if there's gonna be some fluency between sort of day zero, day one, day two, it's about outcomes. It's not about sort of laying down any sort of particular tools that you can start deciding what to do. It's about what, you know, thinking at design and requirements of what is what is sort of the ongoing. And again, they're never static, right? They're just continually experimenting and changing. Yeah. Maybe that's um, part of the maturity is is that you are you are implementing things like Dora 4. You are implementing yeah, metrics. Yeah. I think that's key and like I said the more you can do that up front and think about that as you're getting started man the more it benefits you hugely all along the way and especially in the end adding it in is very challenging to existing tool chains and it can be tough because you yeah, can't don't... improve can't measure <laughs> or don't measure yeah yeah, and I'm even going to go more high level than that. So Mike Gorzen is pretty well known in the value stream management, uh, value stream mapping space, the lean space, once said something really insightful. He said, the only two metrics that count are time and quality, right? Yeah. So if you're really starting to look at what you're measuring, then of course you can granulate it down from there. How fast, how, how good is really what you're looking to measure as part of your improvement? Are you going faster? Is the quality as good mm -hmm. or better than what you had before? And again, how you granulate that all the way through, but everything else really kind of either falls under one of those two categories or doesn't matter. And so I always thought, I've always kind of held that close that when you're really looking at it, how fast, how good are really kind of, you know, good waypoints for mm -hmm. which direction are you going in? A yeah, sort of, you know, that note, if I can just quickly, Roger from the audience says, you know, the key to all of this is to visualize it, right? You must visualize, make a mind map of the subject area together mm -hmm. and develop each branch associations and kind of group them up. Thoughts on that from, the, from our panel? I love it. I, I, I'll quickly jump in. I touched upon it. Um, when we first, was it at Splunk? I think it was at Splunk, making a maturity model for some of the disciplines and things you want to measure, you know, um, that was a godsend for us. We made a maturity model. I think we used Jez's book, The Continuous Delivery. I call that the Bible, you know, going through each section and coming up with a maturity model and then meeting with all the teams internally and saying, all right, how much are you doing around build? How much are you doing around reporting? and really figuring out where we are as an entire organization you identify who are your bright spots so yeah i think there's a lot of ways you can do that um and you can be very data driven as well and so it worked that was an exceptional uh, effort for us as long to make that change we relied upon that maturity model a lot as we went forward it was a great I do resource think that there's sometimes a danger though um when you kind of from the onset say here are our goals and here's how we're going to measure them and here's our maturity model and then you run into goodhart's law right you like mm -hmm. you run into the fact that you know once your measurement becomes a target it's no longer really a measurement you know so i i do think it's good to set objectives and to have these models ahead of time as long as you're constantly reevaluating them as well and making yeah. sure is this still right is this still what we're supposed to be doing and you need to be doing that constantly because you don't know when yeah that model may have to change it could be it could be a month in it could be after a year but just oh, I, I see too many people get too caught up with well we originally said we're going to do x y and z so we're not going to stop until we've done x y and z uh mm -hmm. when in fact maybe halfway through z you realize you should be doing w instead yeah you know i think it goes back to the why why that metric is important i mean what you said true is true gene right time and quality of course are you know two two huge factors but I think you have to, DevOps and these and all of these practices can't be just an internal IT thing because ultimately the business, if it's really making a bet on software, we talk about digital transformation. If you truly are building a business around digital strategies, around software, you we have to connect what we're measuring and what we're doing to outcomes in the business, right? Now, I'm not saying, you know, or we have a revenue number in IT, but of course, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. 
but we have to know that what we're measuring, whether it's goals or metrics, is contributing to being able to accomplish whatever the business strategy is and goals are. And if we can do that, every CIO will be the happiest person in the boardroom. I can tell you, because that's always the challenge is how do I know I'm spending the right amount of money or in the right places to help the business and not just keeping the lights on and they're going to fire me in six months and find the next person that will figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mitchell, you're absolutely right about that because, you know, the migration to customer experience, right? So starting to look at it from a business perspective, measuring customer experience, which is part of obviously quality metrics, is mm -hmm. taking that outside in look. At, you know, that's why I think observability is really interesting because, again, we're trying to look at it from the outside in as as well. And so we've moved past customer satisfaction. We don't want customer, uh, satis you know, satisfied customers. We want delighted customers. And so I think for IT, particularly using things that are helping us deliver better software, faster, higher quality, measuring it even from a customer experience perspective makes a lot of sense. And that's why I'm such a huge fan of SLOs, service level objectives, right? Their, their whole, the important part is actually the SLI, right? Like real quick, so you have an SLI, which is a measurement from a user's perspective and the SLO is just how often do we want that to be good enough? Cause you can't be hundred percent, right? So that's mm -hmm. the quick little version if anyone in the, you know, like in, in the audience isn't familiar, but the whole point is the SLI, the service level indicator, are we measuring things from our user perspective? user's perspective are we thinking about the customer first is that our primary goal here are we doing what we're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. um it's it's a transformative step for a lot of people because they may have only previously cared about number of errors in their logs or yeah. the latency yeah. of some kind of back-end service and it turns out maybe that doesn't actually matter to your users at all so uh, i think it can be a watershed moment for a lot of people to realize like oh we need observability into our users experience you know mm -hmm. and a good way yeah. i always try to put that is when people first start thinking about slos right like what is an sli well it's just a kpi it's a key performance indicator to your business group or it's a user journey to your product management group it's a transactional test to your qa group everyone already cares about the right things we just make sure that organizations are talking to each other and all kind of you know realize that we're all already focused on the same thing Great. Yeah, that's a challenge. Guys, I, I, i'm sorry i'm just gonna ask i had a second poll question that I want to pose to the audience. Now that you've heard from our panel a little bit of sort of what we mean by day-to-day -day DevOps, uh, you know, what 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 it's more about, however you want to define what you're hearing from today, you may not call it day two DevOps at your place, but are do you think you're in this day two DevOps sort of world or phase or what have you? And really, just a yes or no answer. I don't think it's hard. And again, I don't want to take too much time, but I, I'd like to get a decent amount of you. There's, you know, a hundred and something people here. Let, let's try to get some votes in and, and get a yes or no. I think it would be interesting for our panel to see where where you guys are. Where, where are you on this journey? Where are you in this continuum or whatever you want to call it? I, I'm going to close things up in five seconds but so please give us a vote here four three two all right we're going to close it up how do i do it i hit close poll share results so pretty much mm -hmm. mirroring you know 71 percent didn't know what day-to-day -day devops are or excuse me they would day to devops are and 70 percent really don't have a formal plan or think that they are in the day to devops world um it seems like it sounds like got, if you know what it is you have a plan if you don't know what it is you don't have a plan right that's sort of what yeah. it boils down so that sounds about right to me uh, it also look you know so you're telling me there's an opportunity here um, <laughs> there's still a chance <laughs> there's still a chance right the eternal optimist but alex what do you think man what, is, what does that say to you First thing that jumps out to me that I think is really interesting is you note that the number of no's is the same as last time. The number of yeses is actually made up of those who said yes or I'm not sure. Uh, yes. I think that's really kind of interesting actually, because um, as has been brought up by, I think everyone on the panel at this point, um, 
it does it matter if you call it day two um you know like does it matter if you formalize it exactly as that i don't think so um it's more about you know are you uh, in a state are you in an organization that realizes you need to sometimes reflect back and take a look at how things have gone and figure out how you need to move in how you need to move into the future it doesn't doesn't matter what you call it I did want to make a comment to, to Jane's point about how do we really, you know, ensure that everything we're doing is actually leading the customer value, you know, time and quality. And, you know, simple things I like to do is, is really pay attention when you hear a software engineer saying, hey, that saved me from submitting three bugs. You need to capture that data, capture that information. You know, one thing I like to do is when we first start running the full process and, you know, we're now using, let's say, true CICD what does it look like after we ship how long until we hear from the first customer that they crashed or they had a data loss defect and if everything's working as you continue to use these processes that time should get longer and longer and longer you know and the quality of the product should be noticeable by the customers and so that can be challenging though jane to your point to have a, a hard and fast measurement that a c-level exec can come and look at and say hey this saved us 15 million you know running this process or it delighted customers that much that's challenging but it is still something you have to try and put your arms around and provide some insight there for sure i frequently actually think of myself more as like a data analyst or sometimes even a statistician uh, yeah. <laughs> like as my career has gone on and on i really have spent more and more time around just telemetry in general i mean yeah. everything not just telemetry from our services yeah. i was right? going to say you, you have to pay attention to everything every little yeah. detail matters you know it really does right and i think as was touched on by kurt earlier you know uh, we're not just talking about telemetry from your services from the computer software that you write you need to be measuring things from the computer software that delivers your software like your ci cd pipeline you need to be measuring things like ticket counts both internally and externally um i've yep. gotten to the point where i was measuring on one of my teams uh how long pull requests stayed open and i was over on some analysis on this and realized that all the pull requests written in go were taking much longer to get approved than those written in Python. And those were the mm -hmm. two primary languages my team was using at the time. And that was yep. allowed me to realize we need more Go education. We don't have enough, if we're gonna be using this yep. language, we clearly mm -hmm. need more people Perfect. that feel comfortable with it. And mm -hmm. you know, you can get so much insight by measuring everything. You wanna make yep. sure you don't get into a data overload state where you don't know what to examine anymore, of course. So you do have to be careful, but the amount of insight you can get all across the board, uh, gather data, look at that data, and make a decision with it then go back and look at the data again and did we get better did we get worse did we stay the same yeah. uh i really feel like that's mostly my job now just kind of iterating over that kind of yeah. process get, a quick you know, comment data, look at it you know, like repeat. where i feel powerless now a little bit is the whole work from home I'm used to being in the office, part of the action, you know, seeing the people because that's hard for me or harder for me to measure now someone virtually, you know, I, it's easy for me to see a staff member come in and there's something bothering them. And so they're maybe not as engaged or they're more distracted. That's much, much more difficult to do virtually now. And I think that's a, that's, that was always a key measurement for me as a leader was the day to day. How are the people? How's the psyche? How's the team doing? You know, I find that challenging in a virtual world. I can't wait till we get back to the offices and, we're able to work more together, if you will, in person. I miss that a lot. Well, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> I, that. I know. That's a whole other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. think your point is spot on. What you're interested in is how's the team doing? How are yeah. you know connection with the team? Now imagine you're man, you're running a remote or a team of five different groups in different parts of the world you know, per se. So mm -hmm. not, not COVID times. My point being, your emphasis is the right thing. You're either what you're seeking to know and help the mm -hmm. team. Yeah. Is the right well, thing. I'm seeing, it may not I'm be seeing, the author. I'm seeing a lot of creative use of NPS, right? Um, yeah. in that a lot of, a lot of larger organizations are now sort of melding that into things like the Dora. Um, you know, the, the, your point, um, Alex, which was interesting. I've seen where, um, where you just implement sort of the the Dora 4 on all your pipelines and you find that like people are actually doing sort of waterfall within sprints you know um you see that like the end of the two-week period like you see this like no 
no commits, no commits, or no, no, you know, no deliverables, and then no deploys, and then all of a sudden, with the last couple of days, there's this waterfall. So you're doing mini waterfalls. So I love your sort of observation of, of yeah. I think the more you can sort of analyze the data, you know, how people are doing pull requests or how, you know, uh, all those things. Um, are, it's just a wealth of like knowledge that you just get from sort of GitHub. But, but as I started, I do think there's this sort of brilliance of people using NPS. Net Promoter Score stuff the, um, cleverly in all aspects, not just the customer, but with, internally within the delivery teams. And I oh, think we did. We, we, we did do surveys where we did NPS score, you know, and we explained it to the entire team what it meant, you know, the detractors and, and what it meant when you actually pick one of those categories. Um, yeah, that was one way we measured how we were doing from the engineering team perspective in supporting them. You know, I'd always send out an NPS, you know, how are we doing? um but yeah that that works very effectively john were they using sort of between organizations service organizations to each other or about inside the sprint or whatever process they were using any, yeah any, any observation about how they were doing that yeah so they're doing it internally team they're doing it sort of between teams a team of teams and and then obviously sort of customer and service delivery um you know whoever your sort of customer is internal or external Delivery, so really across the board. Um, I, I just uh, I see it show up on more and more dashboards as I visit customers and talk to them, and uh, you know, so I, I just it, to me, if you asked me that question like maybe four years ago, I would have thought, yeah, that's going to be really difficult to do, and, and sort of I, I never underestimate the you know we sometimes as technicians we. And I, again, I, I'm as guilty as anybody standing in our sort of glass house that we're smarter than everybody and everybody tells us how smart we are and, and we're really not, but, but or at least I'm not. Um, but, and then you sort of get that sort of decays on you where you think you go into a client and like, okay, well, how am I gonna help this bank? And then you show up and you see this brilliance of engineering. We, we think these large legacy companies sometimes are sort of stagnant and you walk in and like, oh my God, that just can I take screen prints of that? Can you share that with me? Like I want to write about that, you know. So like I've gotten to the point now within the last few years where I don't, I never underestimate the sort of brilliance of these large banks and and the stuff they can do. So um, and again, that's an area where I've been, you know, uh, surprisingly fascinated and happy to see that sort of show up. Yep, guys, I, I want to interject a quick moment. You know, we do do Amazon gift card. Uh, raffle for all of our roundtables and webinars to the four winners today of Amazon gift cards are Aaron J, Jennifer P, Pinar S, and Valerie K. Our our team will reach out to you and get those gift cards to you. Enjoy them. Guys, we're, we're almost out of time, so I'm going to ask each of you on the panel to kind of wrap up your thoughts here and uh, briefly because we, we are running low on time. And and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day on on this month's DevOps Unbound Roundtable. Mitch, you went last, so why don't you go first? You know, I was thinking about the conversations that we're having today, and you know, is it the definition of day two DevOps or is it something else? This experience is is what I call raising the periscope, where you're normally heads down, getting focused on doing whatever you're doing, and every once in a while, it's worthwhile to stick the periscope up out of the water and look around to see if you're at it where you think you're headed. And that's kind of what this conversation is that you, we and you, audience participants, could also do. It's about learning from each other, right? I mean, I've picked up so many things from Jane and Alex and John and Kurt and just in the 45, 50 minutes that we've been here. So I think that's a practice in and of itself is, is take a moment to raise Periscope and just have a conversation about what you're doing and learn from each other. It's, it's, it's invaluable. Jane, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you to go next. So I love the periscope analogy, Mitch. I think that's really awesome because you're right. Sometimes we have our heads so far down that we forget to look up. And so I think we all agree that the term de day two DevOps may imply that you stop and that I think we all agree that it is a continuum. No matter where on the continuum you are, it's not a project, it's a program, right? And it has no finish line. It has to be based in continuous improvement. But you do, every once in a while, need to put up the periscope or lift up your head, look around, celebrate to Kurt's, you know, to 
Kurt's point, you got to celebrate your achievements. You have to reflect on what you've done really well, what you could be doing better. Are you heading in the right direction? And and I think somebody even it, it, it alluded to the fact are we do we need to adapt right has the business changed has the has the environment changed you know again this year everything changed and so you know making sure that that the path you're on is not a path that's so solid that if the world changes you can change with it so i think day two devops i think from based on everything we've said really means just stop and smell the roses right and really take a time of reflection take a time mm -hmm. of celebration take a term time of adaptation no matter where you are and measure yourself against yourself but also look around and see what other people are doing too excellent kurt how about you yeah i think about the people you know we hear about the three p's people process technology and to me um stay grounded in your people um, you're going to be asked to move mountains. That's what DevOps was invented for, to move these mountains. You don't do that without the human capital and the people. The technology and, and the tool chains, that all matters, but I think the people matter more. So pay a lot of attention to your people, focus there, and you will have great success. Absolutely. Excellent. John? Yeah, so I agree with everybody, what everybody said. So I, I think I'll just sort of tie a bow on it with, I'm a big fan of SRE. I think there's been a lot of book and discussion about SRE. I have read Alex's book, and I think he's done an amazingly good job of doing, helping us understand how to do SRE correctly. I think there's just even some of the other books are so are really vague, and I, you know, I think um, if you don't know about SRE, probably maybe start with Alex's book, honestly, and and work your way backwards because I, I it sounds like I'm not a fan of it. I'm. It's the contrary. I, I think it's an amazing way to think about to do infrastructure, and, and I, I appreciate what you've done, Alex, with that book. So, well, thank you very much. That means a lot. And uh, I guess I'm lost anyway. So, um, a, a major focus of the book, a word I repeat over and over again, um, or a phrase I repeat over and over again, that I think also applies to literally everything everyone just said, everything Mitch just said, and Jane, and John, and Kurt, is you know you need the right data, right? A lot of this conversation today pivoted towards measurements and data. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. remember, no matter what that is, the biggest advice I can give everyone listening today, that data is meant and is best used to have better conversations to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Don't use that data as mandates. Don't use yep. it as cudgels, right? Yep. The data is there to gather around with other people the people that matter so much and say, here are the measurements we have. What does this tell us? And what can we do with this? Don't build mandates off of your data, have conversations. Beautiful. Excellent way to end it. I think I'm gonna end it right there. Hey, Alex, Kurt, John, Mitch, and Jane, thank you all for being on our round table this month. Many thanks to Tricentis for sponsoring DevOps Unbound. Most of all, thank you all who stay right here till the end on this. Hope it's worthwhile. It will be available on demand within a few hours. And we will see you soon on another DevOps.com Media Ops event. You can watch all of these, as I mentioned, on DigitalAnarchist.com. Check that out. Um, but for now, if I don't speak to you before, have a happy and healthy Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all from all of us here at Media Ops. This is Alan Schimmel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.